Bass Gear Geeks, I'm Sean Fairchild for Bass Gear Magazine. Today we're looking at Meridian Guitars J24 6 Carbon. Let's check it out. All right, this is the J24 model made by David Meridian. Meridian, I don't know how to pronounce that correctly in his native Italian. He sets up shop in Avezzano, Italy. I believe it's Avezzano. Did I get it right? Notes? Notes say yes. Let's hope I pronounced that right. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful bass. It is pictured here in carbon black. In fact, um, this is, carbon is part of the model name of this one specific base, it's the J246 Carbon. Uh, there are a number of really cool features, but believe it or not, this is Meridian's take on a jazz bass. And after spending some time with it, I can kind of see where that's coming from. So Fender players will appreciate some of the dimensional characteristics about this bass. For instance, even though it's a six string, we're keeping 19 millimeter spacing at the bridge. So we have full four string spacing. And you know, one of the things that changes, tends to change on five and six string basses is that the necks tend to not get proportionally wider along with the string count. If you look at a four string bass, there's normally a fair amount of territory on either side of, uh, of the strings. When you move up to five and six strings, oftentimes that distance shrinks a little bit. So one of the reasons that this neck might appear so wide to you, aside from the 19 millimeter spacing, is that we're keeping roughly the same amount of fretboard to the sides of the extreme edges of the string spacing here uh, as you would have on a four string bass. In addition to that, we have a 16 inch radius fretboard. It's a phenolic resin fretboard. And that radius is also not as flat as a lot of newer, more modern bass styles and kind of more compatible with Fender players. I'm a fan of headstocks that are angled backwards to create enough back pressure uh, over the nut or over the zero fret in order to not require a string tree. However, this bass, as you can see, does not have a backwards tilted headstock and in fact, it appears to be part of just the same singular piece of wood as the neck, but it's carved in such a beautiful way. It's got sort of this three-dimensional carving that happens that allows the strings enough of a break angle to not require an ugly string tree that kind of mars the looks of the headstock. <laughs> After those elements, for me, that's where any sort of Fender comparison ceases. This bears about as much resemblance to a typical Fender jazz bass as a Federa Monarch. And on the subject of Federa, I should also mention that I feel that these instruments are exceptionally well priced for their place in the US market. In fact, having spent a few weeks with this and playing it a ton, playing it all kinds of different scenarios. Uh, I feel like it holds its own against the highest US made boutique bass builders and a lot of European ones as well. I think it competes in the top end of the boutique market. However, retail price for this guy is $36.50 in US dollars, $3,650. At that price, it punches two times above its weight, easily. It's about 10 pounds even, so for a six string, it's relatively light. I've had sixes that weigh as much as 13 pounds. I think in general, most of the sixes that I've owned have been about 10 and a half to 11 pounds. So 10 pounds is relatively light. And as you can see, it balances very well on a strap. So if, even if I stand up here, yep, it just hangs right there. By the way, really good tip, practice as you play. If, you're, if, if the main thing is you standing up when you play and perform, Set your base, set your strap height, set the way that you sit, all that stuff. Make it the same as when you perform so that all of your practice continues to pay off. The 
engine house of the base here are these Delano Times Square pickups, these two dual coil pickups. Each one is switchable for parallel, single, and series. And I found the base to have the, the character that I, that I prefer the most when kept in parallel or single. A note on single, it doesn't, in my experience, quite nail the typical jazz bass sound. Uh, probably due to the fact that all the Delano pickups I have had and played before tend to be a little bit more modern voice than perhaps what you think of when you think of vintage jazz bass. However, I think this is a benefit. Why would you invest in such a beautiful statement as this just to make it sound indistinguishable from a typical jazz bass style instrument? David has chosen the John East Unipre preamp to run these pickups through, and that's a preamp that I have a lot of experience with, having installed it in several of my own bases. And uh, this is the five knob configuration. So we have master volume, passive tone, pickup balance. The pickup balance is active when in active mode, so it's buffered. The pickups are fed into a buffer. But this preamp is very special and actually uh, has a separate, a, a totally separate passive audio path that uses different segments of these pots to provide the accurate values needed for passive operation. So when the preamp is set to passive mode, the blend actually becomes passive and is not buffered anymore. It's very cool. We have separately reviewed this preamp in Bass Gear Magazine. Make sure to check that out. Moving on, we have treble and bass that are stacked, and then mid-range and the mid-range sweep control. Now I have to admit, I do have a little bit of a difficult relationship with exposed pole pieces on pickups. This bass and basses like it are capable of extremely low action and fast playability, all the kind of good stuff that, that I want out of a bass, a bass that, that pulls the best playing out of me, that pulls the best playing out of the player, something you don't have to fight at all. However, because of the, the, the styles of right hand techniques that I use, some of which are a little bit more aggressive, a lot of strumming, flamenco inspired strumming and multi-finger thumps and pops and things like that, um, it's not uncommon for me in a setup like this where everything can be slammed down pretty low to force one of the lower strings into exposed pole pieces and get kind of a nasty DC thump. <laughs> A couple of really cool features that I would like to mention here are these, I think, really enjoyable pill-shaped mother-of-pearl um, inlays. I just, I love that they kind of look like the pill from Dr. Mario. That's, that's great. And the side markers, hopefully, I'm, I'm assuming that I can get a nice zoom shot on this, but maybe we'll, we'll use some B-roll. The side markers are inlaid pieces of aluminum, which is also echoed in the aluminum band that runs along the top of this swamp ash top here. So there's a swamp ash separate top, a veneer, on top of the chambered swamp ash body, and they are stained slightly different colors and separated by this wonderful little aluminum strip. So there's definitely a lot of really cool, thought out, well thought out Italian design happening here. I mean, it's like the base version of a supercar. It's so cool. And there's all these call outs and design language that continue from one part of the instrument through the next, as they should. Aluminum accents here, aluminum accents here. And hopefully I'll take some good B-roll of this, but even in the pick guard, there are two layers of sandwiched aluminum that just complete this, this call out package. The shaping of the headstock in and of itself, I feel like, is one of the really cool features and again, just sort of continues the organic qualities of the carving of this body with its asymmetry. It's thickest in the middle and that thickness tapers out to the edges in a sort of three-dimensional way that you really have to see firsthand to appreciate. That continues some of the language in the carving of the body that you're not really able to see from this, from this position. Meridian's J24, 
begs you for your fanciest licks. It implores you to open up your creativity and throw whatever you have at it, and then it makes that easier. I think that's probably the most important quality to have in an instrument outside of, obviously, its tonal quality. It makes everything effortless. Why would you want to fight something? Why would you want to put more energy into playing something than you need to and then conserve that energy and use it to push the boundaries even further? To me, that's the mark of, uh, of a truly good fit between instrument and player, and that's how I feel about this J24. For players who appreciate tonal tradition and familiar dimensions, but want to marry that with you know, modern aesthetics and increased playability, all the good stuff that sometimes is difficult from our favorite instruments of yesteryear, especially at a retail price of $36.50, at least current, uh, the current price in US dollars, it's hard not to recommend the Meridian J24-6. I mean, I think it's a pretty safe bet to be right up there on your shopping list with other high-end builders from anywhere around the world if you're looking for an instrument with these characteristics and especially like a super super J style bass. And the fact that you can get it as a six string, which is still not super common in the world of jazz bass territory, uh, is just kind of the icing on the cake. All right, my friends, it is that time once again to wrap this up and go over the whole like and subscribe thing. So if you liked this video, and hey, I mean, what's not to like, right? This is just pure eye candy. Uh, make sure to actually like the video and make sure to subscribe to Bass Gear Magazine. And when you subscribe to Bass Gear Magazine, hit the notification icon. That way, you're the first of all your friends to know when we drop new info about sweet basses made in Avizzano, Italy or anywhere else, or uh, you know, amps, all kinds of great gear. We review audio interfaces, software sometimes, anything that a bassist, a modern bassist might be interested in. So make sure to join us. Again, my name is Sean Fairchild for Bass Gear Magazine, and I'll see you next time.